please subscribe. The Mazda CX-3 is Australia's defending sales champion in the increasingly diverse small SUV segment. The company has now launched a subtle mid-cycle update to keep the chic little urban runabout atop shopping lists. Just like the upgraded Mazda 2 light car we reviewed last month, the MY17CX3's tweaks are relatively minor, nibbling away at peripheral issues and adding some shiny active crash prevention systems, some of which were previously optional, in return for price hikes of between $200 and $500. This latter point was highlighted as an area needing improvement in our most recent small crossover comparison test, so we're glad to see Mazda has listened to the market. The GIST, Forward and Reverse Autonomous Emergency Braking AB, standard across all variants, claimed improvements to noise suppression and ride comfort, and G-vectoring to improve cornering response. The CX-3 range remains the most diverse in the segment, compared to main rivals such as the Honda HR-V, Toyota CHR and Suzuki Vitara. There are four spec levels, front and all-wheel drive, petrol and diesel engine choices, and manual or automatic transmissions. The Bass FWD petrol Neo loses its $19,990, before on roads, rice, Climbing to $20,490 for the manual, or an additional $2,000 for the auto. Beyond EB, standard equipment includes steel wheels, cruise control, Bluetooth USB, rear sensors and six airbags. But, as before, the Neo alone doesn't offer a touchscreen in a segment where infotainment is vital, and all Smith is out on a rear-view camera, which has to be fitted as a mirror-mounted dealer accessory for about $500. It's small wonder the overwhelming majority of buyers will pay the $2,400 premium for the CX-3 Max, based on the sales split of the MY16 car of 9% versus 55%, which adds blind spot monitoring, BSM, and rear cross traffic alert, RCNEA, as part of its upgrade. There are also 16 inch alloy wheels, leather steering wheel, that 7.0 inch tablet screen with rotary dial, satellite navigation, DAB Plus, and rear view camera. The Max starts at $22,890 for the FWD petrol manual, then adds $2,000 for the auto, $2,000 for AWD and $2,400 for diesel. The S Touring opens at $26,990 for the FWD petrol manual, up $4,100 over the equivalent Max, with premiums for auto, AWD and diesel as before. Extras include 18-inch wheels, LED headlights, fake leather, head-up display, keyless entry and traffic sign recognition. The Akari opens at $31,490 for the FWD petrol manual, and again commands the same hikes for auto, AWD and diesel. Extras for the $4,500 jump over the S Touring include a sunroof, leather seats with memory, adaptive headlights and lane departure warning. We'd struggle to justify paying $37,890 for an Akari with diesel engine, auto and AWD when you could get a very nice CX-5 or Tucson for that money. Stylistically, the CX-3 remains one of the more car-like crossovers out there, with no pretension of toughness. Its 155mm of ground clearance makes it lower than some passenger vehicles, but its curvaceous design and snub proportions are on brand for Mazda. There's not a whole lot difference inside the new CX-3, with headline cosmetic changes comprising a cleaner new set of instruments, an improved head-up display, still projected onto a flip-up glass screen though, digital radio and a nice new steering wheel. Positives are the good materials, particularly the full leather touch points on the range topper, while the tablet screen on all variants from the Max and up, controlled by the MCD Connect system's rotary dial, remain highly intuitive. But it all still feels like a high-riding Mazda 2, with fewer storage options than the HRV or Vitara and a notably tighter feel.
there's also still very limited rear seat space for what is ostensibly a crossover SUV and a 264 liter boot, expanding to 1174 liters with the seats down, is tiny. If you want maximum practicality, any other rival will do the job better. But if you want a higher riding city car for two, that looks edgy and chic, then the CX-3 remains a top pick. The car's 1,500 monthly sales average suggests Mazda knows the market well. There are no changes to the CX-3's engine range, which comprises a 109 kW-192 Nm 2.0-liter naturally aspirated four-cylinder petrol and a 77 kW-270 Nm from 1,600 revolutions per minute, 1.5-liter turbo diesel. The petrol is purchased by a staggering 97% of customers, making the diesel almost irrelevant, despite its healthy dose of torque. The $2,400 cost premium is not really offset by its superior fuel economy, 4.8 liters slash 100 kilometers versus 6.1 liters slash 100 kilometers, and its characteristics are less suited to the CX-3's urban habitat. The 2.0 Sky Active Petrol is a good fit for the car, especially given its low curb weight, ranging between 1,251 kg and 1,356 kg. The unit is immediately responsive and peaky, and well matched to the 6-speed auto with to board converter. Ideal for inner urban driving. About 10% of buyers traditionally go for the 6-speed manual gearbox, and it's a genuinely lovely unit that feels just like the MX-5 convertibles. Funny that. The overwhelming majority of CX-3 buyers choose front-wheel drive, and in a car like this it's hard to justify spending an extra $2,000 for on-demand AWD that sends to work to the rear wheels when the onboard sensors detect wheel slip. The CX-3 is as suited to off-roading as a fish is to playing tennis. Still, we have to commend Mazda for offering such a broad range of configurations. Dynamically, the GVC system is the major change. This system cuts to work to the front wheels at the opportune time, in order to transfer the car's weight forward and improve turn-in. We've trotted it back to back, and found the improvements subtle, but there. The CX-3s feel some steering, low body and good chassis balance remain, making it feel very much like a little hatchback to chuck around, despite the low fi torsion being rear end. Roll and response are well synced, though the Toyota CHR has it covered here. Mosti has also modded the suspension bushes and added a heap of sound deadening material to isolate the cabin better from road noise. Based on our brief steer at the launch, the CX-3 does feel a little softer, better on compression and controlled on the rebound, and sounds a little quieter than before it eclipsed. We want to get the car through our garage and run tests, but civil conversation at 110 km per hour on coarse chip roads proved very possible this time around. From an ownership perspective, Mazda offers a 3-year slash unlimited kilometer warranty, 12 months slash 10,000 kilometers servicing intervals and lifetime advertised servicing prices. Its dealer network also wins more customer awards than most. The upgrades to the Mazda CX-3 range for MY17 are subtle, but worthy. The fundamentals of the car aren't any different, in that it remains rubbish in terms of overall practicality, and excellent in terms of design. But the improved value, the extra kit, especially the safety stuff, make the small price hikes worth it, plus welcome updates to the handling, ride and NVH suppression, alongside the continuation of many configurations, will keep it the top seller. Not necessarily our segment leader, but we can see the appeal to many buyers, more now than ever.